welcome to Thursday's 905 Roundup. I'm Roland Tanner. I am Joel McLeod. And, well, we're going to talk a big, about a big 905 story that is in Ottawa. <laughs> but it's not in Ottawa, it's across <laughs> the province. And it has supporters from across the province too, to be fair. Um, um, and certainly opposition from across the province and across the 905. Um, so, uh, Joel, what's, what's grinding your gears about this, this peaceful protest I hear is happening in, um, in downtown Ottawa right now? So-called peaceful. Uh, yeah, but I mean, quite it's sarcastic the thing, there. Yeah, I mean, it's the only thing that um, anyone in Canada is talking about this past weekend is this truck convoy for freedom. Uh, and I, I use air quotes around that to, uh, to, to protest. I'm not sure what at this point. It, it, it started off with truck... Uh, vaccine mandate, truckers vaccine mandates to cross the border into America and somewhere between, I'm going to say Calgary and Thunder Bay, it transformed into basically everything, every group that we have against government and, and Justin Trudeau and, and the liberals. Uh, and, and apparently also, I'm going to say certain elements of the conservative party, uh, as it turns out, just basically we have a group against anyone in power. We're, we're just going to go and, and hold up Ottawa. Now, the reason why I, I say there's a 905 connection is uh, on the Thursday and Friday uh, prior to this weekend's events, it uh, there's a there's a large contingent from the 905. There there were reports from uh, Halton police and, uh, and and Peel police that there's concerns that basically the the another convoy going to meet up with them in Ottawa was going to be coming through the 905 coming as far down as Niagara, winding up through the Golden Horseshoe, and ran, ran the risk of causing traffic problems here in the in the region. To date, I don't think there's anything reported, but you can see on overpasses in the in the along the QEW and long, then along the 403 and 401, people gather on, on overpasses to wave flags and show their support. And so the reason I, I look at this as a 905 story is that, you know, it's clear that at some point in Ottawa, this is going to end. The, those trucks will be either towed away or just give up and leave, but they're going to go home. And, and it turns out that there's, you know, there's a large factor or faction here in the 905 region. And well, what I, mean, the, I know, guess, I guess, I guess if you take any, if you take any population of, of how many people live in, in the, in the broadest definition of the GTHA, 10 million, 8 million. I can't remember. I, uh, you know, Big chunk of people. Let's put it that way. Then you're going to find a large number of people who support pretty much anything. Um, mm -hmm. The the you know ten percent of night people who live in the nine hundred five is a hell of a lot of people. Doesn't mean that they have any kind of have a leg to stand on in terms of kind of being justified as saying that they are the people. It, it's such a uh, which well, you know the maths just doesn't add up for me with this whole bizarre thing i mean it, well what, what gets me is what gets me is that we know for from public health statistics that the majority of people clearly on the side of vaccines there's last i've, I've heard numbers between 85 to 90 percent of the the eligible population are fully vaccinated and so the, the you know the, the people who are not vaccinated are clearly a very very vocal minority mm -hmm. against it now here's where i i get perturbed is I don't know what what it is that they're they're protesting. I don't know what the the objection to everything is. I I, I mean I, I do and I, I do and I don't. I, I get I, people are tired. People are tired of seeing uh, restaurants being closed and and people are tired of the open and shut antics of our provincial premiers. But let's face it. I, I mean this is the reason why is because the anti-vax contingent of our population, they're the ones who got Omicron and they're the ones who had to go to our hospitals and clog up our system. Like that, this is the reason why we had the lockdowns, why we had to close down our schools and, and restaurants is because we were trying to limit these individuals from getting Omicron and, and going into our hospitals and clogging it up. And I, you know, to say that they're the ones who who are hard done by, or they're they're the ones fighting for our freedoms, I I, I kind of call BS on it. We're the ones, th those of us who got vaccinated, those one, those of us who've been doing the social distancing, we have been pulling the weight of of everyone of, of these of this minority so far in this uh this pandemic. Yeah, I mean, I've kind of got to the point where I'm, I'm almost, I almost resent, I almost resent engaging in arguments in, in, in I. Yeah, 
and why the hell should I respond to 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 arguments which which uh, which just don't make any sense at all? Um, mm. That that are just that are moronic. Now, now I, I said to someone on Twitter, I didn't say to someone, I just made a general point that you know my Twitter feed is just wall to wall truckers and, and people pointing out how wrong the truckers are, and that's fine. Um, but. It's also a valid point to say you're not doing any good because the only people reading your stuff are people who already agree with you. They're not sure, certainly not reading it. And, you know, if you are going to persuade people, ultimately you have to persuade people of different points of view. I mean, you're not going to persuade the leaders. The leaders are probably irredeemable assholes and are going to be for the rest of time. But every movement has its leaders and it has its followers. And, and, and ultimately you persuade people of a different point of view and if you keep on calling them idiots um it doesn't actually help very much that we've got to find what, what i'm ultimately saying is we need to find better ways or rediscover older ways of actually having conversations with people that we disagree with but i mean i guess that just goes to the root of everything that's wrong well, with here's, society here's a, at the moment here's a th- but here's the thing with that. I keep hearing this. Oh, we need to have a conversation with the other side. Well, and we I'm not talking about having a conversation and, and, with fascists. I mean, I'm talking about. Well, no, 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 I'm not even talking about that. I, I, at some point, there is no like. You have got to realize there is no middle ground. Like we're not. We are not. I. I don't see a compromise. Those who were vaccine hesitant uh, either are coming around to see the. They, they've seen the the evidence. Say, okay, my my fears have been put to rest, or they're just saying, you know what screw it, I'm going to get it or whatever. Like those, those individuals that we had to convince that we had to say, okay, now look at the facts, look at the evidence. The, the, you know, the, the reality is billions of people around the globe have gotten a vaccine. We aren't seeing, you know, billions of deaths or, or, or what have you. The vaccines do work. Okay. Those people say, oh yeah, okay. I see the, I see your point. Okay. You're right. I'll go get a shot. The, the, this 10, 10 or 15% of the population that are now just demanding well, the rest of us, you know, the rest of us give up everything, and we just have to cater to them. I'm sorry, I, I, a, I have no patience anymore. I really no, don't. and, I, and I, don't done. get me wrong. That's not what I'm and saying. It, I'm completely happy with, with. And I just, I don't, I don't, I, and I don't see how, like, where we sit down and say, okay, I see, I see your point. I see where they're coming from. I, I understand their points of view. I just think they are absolutely wrong, and there's nothing that they are going to say that's going to convince me otherwise. So. I guess Where does I guess the us? point I'm, I'm ultimately making is about the the people who 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 may lean in the direction of supporting that kind of point of view who do not out and out support it yet of kind of mm-hmm. uh, bringing you know ra- the polarization of debate is a massive problem we have in society I don't think and we can't question that that things have become so polarized that we have in in society in the Western world far beyond Canada we have two two solitudes as as phrase goes that aren't talking to each other that's a problem we need to in terms of this specific thing and these specific idiots yeah i mean i think just mandate the damn vaccines or i mean again i always go back to like examples of other huge crises such as world war ii but you know if you didn't want to fight if you didn't want to be conscripted and if you didn't want to fight you could do that you had that right you had that freedom to choose not to fight However, there were massive results that came from that decision that would be extremely inconvenient to you. Um, so, you know, ultimately, uh, I don't think anybody is going to hold people down or force a needle into their arm. Um, the, the only debate is about, you know, what's what's the what? How big is the price that you pay if you're not going to take it? Uh, and this is just a tantrum by by yeah, like a minority of a minority of a minority of fairly privileged white people i mean sure a lot of them were fairly working class people and that kind of stuff but basically this it's this is well, trump in canada this is very, this is our they are very privileged decision. they are very privileged i mean let, let's face it they roll trucks tractor trailers into downtown ottawa and there is yeah yeah no there, like there's been no Reproachment by the Ottawa police or OPP or anybody. Again, it's, I'm, I'm almost shocked and perturbed that these people go into our nation's capital. They shut the city down. The downtown is shut down, essentially. People are fed up with the honking and blaring of horns and the desecration of the war, war memorial. And, uh, and it's just at some point you got to sit there and say, well, you know, if this, if this was a, a, a you know, a First Nations protest, if this was a Black Lives Matter protest, if they were, if they were doing this, do you, how long would it take for us to see the RCMP in full 
paramilitary tactical gear coming in and storming the the ramparts, so to speak. I I, I find I, I I'm a, I'm just really shocked, dismayed, and just perturbed by all of it that this is going on. And you know, again, my kind of bring down the question is what happens afterwards? We do we go on and pretend that this never happened? Do we go and, and go back to our Canadian politeness and say, oh, you know, we have to, well, we just have to listen to the other side and sort of have to say, or do we find, you know, kind of grow up here as a society and say to these people, no, you're, you don't get, you don't win this one. Um, you, it, it, it's time, it's time to clamp down on, on these people. Uh, and, uh, and you're saying, the, the, the people that need to be clamped down on are, are the, the rebel, the people who are driving this thing have been driving it for the last decade. Um, uh, the, I mean, uh, you know, uh, the, yeah. the Fox News is that comes out that you can you can subscribe to Fox News in Canada, but also the other far right um, things that are just just spreading this disinformation and spreading conspiracy theories that just make you know. Well, I mean, what, what, just uh, what, wait, I'm I'm, inc- I'm encouraged in our, our our democracy is intact is because. I mean, and we want to talk about a failure of communication. So this truck convoy rolls into Ottawa with the intent of rounding up Justin Trudeau and holding him for war crimes and, and you know, dis- demanding that the, the government be dis- uh, dissolved and, and replaced, I don't know, with something else. And instead, they have the one leader who came out and publicly endorsed them and said, yes, I, I fully support you. He's now facing an internal civil war in his own political party, and he's now fighting for his political life. And I just said, where did this go left? Like, where did this go wrong that this is just, you know, it's just this weird topsy-turvy nonsense. It's just, it's literally children throwing a temper tantrum mm-hmm. on a national scale. And it's just, you know what? I just I don't have time for it. I'm 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 my heart goes out to the people of Ottawa because uh, at what at what point do you just have to say enough's enough? Send in the police, arrest, to- impound their trucks and their RVs and whatnot, and say yeah, you you don't have any money to get home. Too bad. Uh, again, I mean, it, there are, people have a right to protest. Okay, let's get out of the way. But that is not defending this protest and the way it's behaved, which, which is which has not done any of the things that protests are supposed to do, um, um, among which is just, you know, holding holding the downtown Ottawa hostage, in essence. I mean, it's like, that shouldn't be possible. They shouldn't have let that happen. Mm-hmm. You put up a couple of roadblocks, you know, what are they going to do? This could have been prevented now if they want to, you know, it was smarter ways of dealing with it. It's like, yeah, you can go and protest, but you're not bringing those damn trucks downtown. Um Go go and stand out in the cold like everybody else who protests does. Um, yeah, no problem. You know, get get. But but no, I mean, it's somehow they were just allowed to drive in there and, and settle right down. I mean, this this is our our storming of the capital moment because they may not have stormed par- parliament, but but you know, we had an election when uh, how many months ago? Um, you know, and and who won? And and you know, much as I'll be the first to 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 bitch about the way our electoral system works, well, it's not about that. It, it's but you know, we we had an election. Democracy prevailed. You your your outcome didn't happen. Too bad. That's what happens in a democracy. We we don't don't necessarily like get the guy or woman that we want in, elected into power. Um, but you're right. Like to, to go in and say we demand that the governor general dissolve parliament and we impose this this. I don't even know what they're trying to do. Aside from that, it's just it's ridiculous. And you're right; it is. It was, uh, you know, our January thirty one thirty first moment was our. our uh, I'm, I'm rambling here, but you're right; it was our January sixth moment. It was our storming of the Capitol. Thank goodness that uh, they weren't armed, because uh, that, that you know. That, but this is just I mean, it's the people behind these movements. We, that we ultimately, these I mean, they're they're ludicrous, right? I mean, January sixth. Insurrection or whatever the hell we're calling it now in the states was was farcical. Mm-hmm. I, I, you know, the only thing which makes it non farcical was a that people died and, and b that they actually got indoors and kind of sat in there for a couple of hours uh, with the complete yeah. absence of, of of the people who meant to defend that building. Um, I mean, not the complete absence, but you know, the the right. complete failure of of the procedures that should have been in place. Um, the, it's just the same. We've basically got people camping out in downtown Ottawa in outright denial that that 
that the elected prime minister is the elected prime minister. And it's like, you don't, I mean, whatever else you get to question in life and whatever else you get to promote, you don't get to call elections into question. Um, well, there's, there's just, there's that. And it's just, again, it's this childish temper tantrum that we're supposed to, I guess, I guess what I'm, I'm angry at is the, the bullies went in, kicked over the table, you know, literally, literally, literally urinated on the rug. You know, we're just destroying the place. And we were just supposed to sit there and take it. And I, was, I sit there and say, like, where, where, when do you get to kind of punch back? When, when do we just say enough's enough? I'm not, we're not doing this anymore. And I think, I think right, the bring traditional, in the va- bring it, bring in the, bring in the vaccine mandates, bring in uh, the masking mandates, make it clear. You do, you want to go for a bite to eat. You want to go see a movie. You want to go work out in a gym. You are getting faxed uh, and you're getting your booster shot whenever you need it. Uh, you need to be masked. We need to, Maintain it. If you have to maintain social distancing, then change fire code laws to accommodate that. But don't, these are coming back. If you have a problem with it, then stay home. That's it. Just stay home. Don't bother us. Gri- gripe in your business. Go, go on Twitter. But the rest of us have lives to live. And yeah, I mean, people are talking about sending in the army and all this stuff. And I mean, the point I guess I'd make with regards to that is it should never have got to a position where that's the only option on the table no. to get yeah. them out. You yeah. know, I mean, the snow may take care of it, and the fact that their porta potties are all full up, <laughs> um, you know. Well, um, but, right. but like we, it, uh, you know, it, it shouldn't. This shouldn't be allowed to happen. This shouldn't, you know, and the yeah. the kind of. I definitely get the approach usually that with, with many demonstrations, although I certainly didn't bloody see it with, you know, remember the G7 in Toronto, um, uh, it, you know, it, it's better to take a softly, softly att- approach with, with protests sometimes. But, you know, with this kind of thing, when you've got days on end in the capital, you know, li- literally stopping people doing uh, d- exactly the things these people are protesting about, which is earning a damn living. You know, it's like, well, you know, when is enough enough? Uh, and it's got to be coming soon. But I mean, the, the, the fact that it got to that point is the bigger failure. Absolutely. Why don't we leave it at that for uh, this part? We'll come right back after this uh, quick message from our sponsor. And we're back. Uh, now, taking it, looking away from Ottawa, uh, we're going to look you down to Hamilton. And if you people remember from uh, our, our 905 Roundup episode from last week, we were talking about the uh, uh, city of Hamilton shutting off the, the vents in their uh, city hall, which the ho- uh, homeless in Hamilton used to stay warm, especially on uh, on cold winter nights like we're experiencing now. Um, on that note, there's been a, 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 a an initiative taking place at the grassroots level that, you know, is looking to kind of look into this problem. Uh, what, what are we talking about, Roland? Yeah, the, 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 um, tiny shelters, um, Hamilton's Alliance for tiny shelters is something that popped up on everybody's, uh, Twitter feed today. And there's, uh, now has an article in the spectator. It, it's, it's, it's basically, um, a, a, an idea to, to rather than, uh, rather than just kick people, um, down the line, uh, who, who are living, uh, who are homeless at the moment, rather than just kicking them off the doorstep and hoping they go away, uh, and rather than, uh, pulling down their tents uh, and hoping they go away, that we actually give them short-term, safe, clean, heated accommodation in the form of tiny shelters, um, uh, which you might call huts, I guess. Um, that would be um, the propo- The suggestion is that these could be um, put in um, the John A. McDonald um, school grounds, the former Sir John A. McDonald school grounds. Um, and... Uh, immediately a, a couple of um, at least two or if not three or, or more of the uh, city councillors jumped on this. I, I know uh, Narinda Nan did. I know um, John Paul Danko did. You know, sort of making broadly positive noises about this idea. Um, and it, it, it's it's the kind of idea that we're, we're, we're talking about all the time. Is like, this this is like a new idea I haven't come across before. That, that that says, you know, why the hell can't we do something uh, better than the traditional things of just kicking people, literally kicking people off the doorstep and boarding it up? Um, you know, it, yeah, it's, it's certainly it's not just... luxury. It's eight an eight by ten um, uh, temporary uh, shelter, um, but with, with uh, lighting, heat, fire extinguisher is the idea, um, and would have a small fridge uh, and a microwave. Um, I mean... But you know what? It's it's the kind of the, the initiative of providing real, 
you know, a real shelter. Like the, the problem is that the shelter systems don't really work. I mean, they're, they're violent, they're violent, they're crowded. You're not really allowed to stay there. Um, aside, aside from overnight, you're kicked out, uh, the next morning. So it, you know, it, it's this, this shows to be a much better, uh, a more humane, a humane solution, I would think to, um, to the homeless uh, problem. I don't see it as a, as a permanent solution. God, no. But, you know, my hope would be... Well, it's not you, permanent. It's not permanent, no. But they're also making the point that they don't see it as 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 short-term in the way that we conditionally, traditionally think of short-term solutions for housing and that uh, they would stay there until these people had permanent places to live. Um, and I think right. that, that also is a valid... Uh, very, you know, so it's like if this... If, if you want to get rid of those huts off that field, then you better provide housing to the people who are living in them. And that seems like a very reasonable way of looking at it. Um, but it does, the great thing about this is that they're clean, they're safe, and you can have social programs go in to help, yeah, help connect the, the those those who are in need into the, you know, if you want a better term, like the social pipeline, right? They can get them plugged into... Uh, uh, social programs, employment services, uh, you know, just a, a, like, you know, where the, where these people are, you can go to them and say, okay, hi, I'm, I'm Joel. I'm from this program. I can help put you in touch with employment uh, opportunities, or I can look into, uh, into mental health and addiction issues. If that's what you're, you're looking for, it's and you know, in, you, again, it's not, a, I don't, I don't want to, I'm not an expert, so I'm not going to say, oh, this is perfect. But I look at it and say, like, it's, you know, a lot of the problems with homeless is that they're in one spot one day and they're not there the other. But this way, you're like, no, they, I know where they're going to be tomorrow. Yeah. So I'll just yeah. show up and say, hey, let's, let's keep with this. Let's keep with this. Okay. Plug you in and get you uh, off the streets permanently. Um, so, um, yeah. I mean, so Ted McMeekin, who was formerly the um, liberal MPP for, uh, Dundas, uh, Flamborough Dundas, um, mm -hmm. Flamborough Westdale and Dundas. Um, he, he's kind of the spokesman for this thing. And, and um, you know, this isn't this, I, I didn't know this, but, but apparently a similar project was set up, uh, nearly two years ago in Kitchener that currently is housing 50 residents in 43 of these very small, uh, cabins. Um, and the, co-founder and board member of that group um uh in in kitchener said that it has had a completely transformative effect on the lives of the people concerned so um uh, that that they call that uh, that project is called a better tent city um and um yeah exactly a, a, a better tent city seems to be pretty much exactly what it is um you know, it, it, if it kind of acts as a, as a better way to put pressure on on councils to find permanent solutions for homelessness, I mean, you know, it's almost it almost works on that basis too. That um, uh, that those things <laughs> will be there as a reminder to the city that it's not. I mean, with with people just sleeping rough and, and people sleeping in tents for whatever reason, it seems like we accept the idea of just sort of booting people off and hoping they, they go away. And, um, which, which, you know, it's the traditional thing that's just happened throughout my life, certainly, but, but it seems well, utterly it, futile. I, I just like to see this, this kind of thing happening. Cause it's, it's the, the humane and compassionate way to address this, you know, at the, at the center of this are people that they're, they're not, you know, they're people who are, in need that for whatever reason, uh, whether they need a, a helping hand or, or they need some, uh, th some therapy or, or addiction issue, wh whatever the case may be, no, there's no cookie cutter solution to this. And, but I think the first thing is say, let's, let's get you someplace warm and safe. Like that, it, that to me is like, that's the ba the bare minimum. That's the starting point. Right. And then once you're, 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 you're secure, right. It's, it's almost like the, the, the hierarchy of needs, right. You need, the first thing you need is shelter and security. That, that that's one of the, the primary ones before you can start to think about any it building on anything else, and it's just it's a sad sad state that for so long people just forgot about that. There's you know, you figure it out on your on your own and say, well, no, just it's amazing. Just like a small a small insulated hut to protect you from the elements, it can go such a long way to getting you back on your feet to uh, to to actualization of of a person. Um, it's a, you know, kudos to uh, hats. Uh, or I guess hats off 
to them. For, for, forgive, the, forgive the pun, uh, but this is this is a really good thing, and I'm I'm happy to see uh, see it taking place in uh, in Hamilton. And I'll just throw throw one other quick thing. It's just kind of semi related, just because it's another Hamilton thing. Um, as we're waiting tonight for the sort of next big um, snowfall is being predicted or forecast. Um, and, and it's just a, a chance to have another go, another gentle go at the spec. And then the spec's a decent newspaper, not having a complete meltdown at them. But there's a headline today saying, Hamilton is ticketing snow shoveling scoff laws amid a storm of blocked sidewalk complaints. Those blocked sidewalk complaints are mainly by people trying to get the city to do its job and come out and clear up sidewalks. Hamilton doesn't clear sidewalks. Uh, if, you, if you live in Burlington or, or many of the other 905 cities, um, sidewalks are cleared. It may take a couple of days, um, but usually there's a little thing that comes around and, and clears the sidewalk for you. It's not perfect because often the, the big plow comes around afterwards and covers it back up mm. again. But but basically, um, you know, the point is you can't actually rely much as we, you know, we should all be good citizens and clear, clear our own sidewalk. Some people are elderly. Some people are, uh, have disabilities. Some people have other reasons why they can't actually clear their sidewalk. Um, uh, you know, each year, multiple people die of heart attacks because they go out and try and clear their sidewalk and they're not fit and healthy enough to actually do it. So, you know, actually doing this, you know, prioritizing pedestrians in exactly the same way as we would prioritize drivers seems like uh, a perfectly sensible thing to do but Hamilton hasn't got there yet so it's kind of cheesed off uh, the spec suggests you know it's basically putting the blame on citizens for not clearing their sidewalks properly when it's like no this is a this is a case of Hamilton being kind of living in the dark ages um having a very car centric approach as 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 we know um and, and it really is bad I mean I've noticed the difference since, since coming here that I nearly wiped out and broke my neck the other day and you know i'm i'm not that old and decrepit yet but um you know it's not that far away so kind of related thing of 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 stories being covered without really kind of i would say looking at those stories from, from the right direction uh, both in this case and with the uh uh you know what we what we were discussing earlier with the uh tiny huts anyway enough oh. of, that, of that i think <laughs> Okay, well that's uh, that's our episode for this week, uh, folks. We'll be back in, uh, on Tuesday with another episode of the Nine Hundred Five. Or till then, take care and uh, talk to you soon. Bye bye. That's it for this episode of the 905er. Thank you for listening. As always, you can send us your feedback, thoughts, and concerns, or ideas for future episodes to our email, info at 905er.ca. We'd love to hear from you. You can help us keep the 905er going by financially supporting us through Patreon as well as PayPal. Visit us at 905er.ca and click on the support tab. As well, links are in the show notes for your convenience. Lastly, you can find us on social media. Search for the underscore 905er on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and LinkedIn. So long for now. See you next time. to make the most out of this life and optimize your personal wellness then check out the natural man podcast join me host mike c as we explore all areas of human wellness physical mental and emotional learn strategies to optimize your own well-being and be in the driver's seat of your own health remember your doctor works for you learn biohacks neurohacks ways to improve sleep and ways to optimize your body and your mind. Check us out on Apple, Spotify, the Fountain app, and at naturalmanpodcast.com.